when you hear Jelly Roll Morton singing Stars and Stripes forever, and he said, I think the way he did it was something like he says that they, instead of saying, do dee da do dee da do dee, he said, they said, epo de ba do de ba do de do dee, de do dee, epo po pe po pe pa, do de do dee, da do dee, and that's it. That's it. When you hear that, you know what that is. I met Stanley in 1979. I was 17. I had first come to New York. I was playing in McKell's with Art Blakey. And he came up and started trying to tease me and say I, was, I couldn't play. And he said, come to my house. And uh, I wanted to talk about this. I said, OK, man. He lived in the village. I went to his house. It's just nothing but books, books and records. I said, man, who is this guy with all these books and records? And uh, none of which I had read, of course. I first became aware of Stanley in the mid to late 80s uh, as a young man growing up in Philadelphia listening to uh, Winton and Branford Marcellus. And I remember buying all of uh, Winton's recordings at that time, and I see all of the liner notes are written by Stanley Crouch. And I remember thinking, man, who is this, who is this Stanley Crouch dude, you know? Using all of these big words and things like that, and I'd never heard anything like that or read anything like that on a jazz record. We've been friends and, and hanging out with each other for just about 50 years. I think of Stanley as, as uh, one of my larger than life friends. Stanley Crouch had a, uh, a real all-consuming passion for so many artistic modes of expression, including poetry and dance and theater. He was equally Im impassioned about all those things. Stanley was, West Coast was in Los Angeles, first a poet and a writer. Then he got into drums, a drummer playing avant-garde drums. He always hung out at the clubs to hear what people were playing. He was always at the Village Vanguard. He was always at the Village Gate. He was always at the Blue Note. If there was somebody he liked or someone he was curious about, he was gonna go sit for every set and listen intently to every note. And, uh, and then he would give his, you know, give his grades out at the end of the set. And I used to call him the, the doctor of connections. He just connects everything, one thing to another thing. What jazz does is it, it uses democratic means to achieve utopia. See, that's what it really is about. See, that when somebody says that those guys are smoking, they're really swinging, then that's utopia, that's not democracy. So you use the, you use the democratic idea of people coming together and creating together and working together and each individual's value contributing. But what the objective is, is utopia. That is the point at which everything is perfect. And, and, and that's what the groove is in jazz. It's the moment at which everything is correct. I think Stanley Crouch, as much as any jazz advocate that we've ever had, um, made his writing into a a very profoundly moving musical instrument. I would always read Stanley Crouch's criticism. E even if for nothing else, I always knew I was going to be shocked by something he said, you know. Obviously, he's one of the most unapologetic people in the entire world, you know. You know, I feel very strongly that, that Stanley Crouch's contribution to Jazz and Lincoln Center as one of its co-founders and enduring you know, mentors of Jazz Lincoln Center has, it's been one of the crowning achievements of his, of his life in this music. He put his whole life on the line for the music. The music is his life, I and mean, he's contributed so much uh, through his writings and through his, his, his actual advocacy in terms of showing up, being present, and being supportive of the music. I can reconnect with my entire family, all of my neighborhoods, everything I've ever done or imagined. Whether I hear any jazz band heat up and put the pots on, showing how well it can struggle for joy together. No art says I want to live better or more forcefully than jazz. Yep, that's definitely Crouch. <laughs>